Good evening, sports fans. Crowbat for the win of the Tokyo Minorities here today with GBA D League Season 4 Playoffs Round 1. This is my team builder. Now you're going to say to me, where the heck have these team builders been, man? What, what's wrong with you? No, 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 no. So the players I've been playing the last three weeks of the GBA D League have been people I could have definitely played in the playoffs with. Unfortunately, Randy did not make the playoffs, so I would probably try to do a team review sometime after the season ends. I'd like to maybe see how the team did, as a, uh, in retrospect, rather. I think that's probably a fun thing I can do. Goldoa is in the playoffs, so we might play him. Glad I didn't do that. And Techno is in the playoffs, so glad I didn't do one for him as well. So we don't want to give away all our trade secrets just yet, of course. Especially because I didn't quite use all the sets, so who knows? Maybe, maybe not. But anyway, we're not going to focus on that today. We're going to go one game at a time. That's my, that's my motto. One game at a time. We're going to start with these guys. We're going to start with the Exeter Chief Electivires. It is not Exeter City Electivires, as I mistakenly said last time. But he's got a pretty scary roster. It stayed nearly the same. The only change since last time is now he has Rabombi over Slurpuff, which I actually like, for me, better. I can better deal with Rabombi with my team. Whereas I have Amoongus and I have Zara Aura on my roster this time. But of course, we know that Zygarde... Charizard Y, Snorlax, and Mew, even Gengar, are big, big threats to my team. Especially Zygarde, Mew, and Charizard. Those three, I need to make sure I check them very, very well. I have to, okay? There's, there's no way around that. But it's, it's going to be fun. It's going to be fun to talk about this team. I enjoyed making it, so I worked very closely with Kaz and Gino to make this team as great as we possibly could. Thank you guys so much. Offered so many great ideas, helped perfect some EV spreads. They, these guys are great. Check them out. And I think I'm ready to jump into the first set of the week, and here it is. So we are bringing the GOAT! The GOAT is coming to the playoffs, guys. He is here. Drampa the GOAT. We've got a Cloud 9 Drampa here, guys. We've got Max Physically Defensive, Habanberry, Cloud9, of course, Glare, Roost, Surf, and Ice Beam. So, Max Physically Defensive is for the expected physical Dragon Dance or Belly Drum Zard Y. We can easily take on a Dragon Dance Zard Y. Easily. And we can two-shot it with Surf every time. No Roost shenanigans with HP Rock, none of that. We're just going to go cut that out and go for Surf against it. Or Glare, too. Glare would be really nice. Could spread glare throughout his team honestly if he thinks he wants to switch around on us we got that going for us we got ice beam for the zygarde combined with habanberry we can live a plus one outrage and we have a chance to live a plus one z outrage even it's incredible if he's belly drum zard by the way earthquake even at plus six only has about a six seven percent chance to ko from full and assuming he's at 51 percent health from the belly drum surf ko's so between all of these sets and by the way, Cloud9 obviously stops the sun from going up, so Flare Blitz or Fire Blast would not do that much to Drampa by its naturally good typing. But between that, those two mons should be checked very well. And depending on his Spear Tomb, it actually checks that pretty well too. If he brings the same set as last time, or if he brings just Shadow Ball coverage and not expecting Drampa, obviously I'd wall it completely. And that would be pretty darn cool, if I do say so myself. Alrighty, let's jump into the next mon for the week, and that is going to be Mega Glade. Alrighty, so this mon is going to have Galadite, just divide ability. It's going to have Destiny Bond, Taunt, Low Kick, and Knock Off. So it's going to be max speed to speed Ty Gengar. I may as well, considering I would have wanted to outspeed Kobalion anyway. It's got mostly bulk, physical bulk, so I can live outrages, plus one outrages, I believe, you know, thousand arrows from Zygarde if I need to. I can live with Flare Blitz from Zard if I need to. I, I have that ability with this EV spread. Now, Destiny Bond is primarily for something like Mew, where if he tries to set up in my face and I have a last ditch effort to get rid of it, that's what it would be for. Maybe not Mew necessarily, it could be other things too. Maybe Snorlax if he's set up like five curses and Glade can't touch it with any attacks. By the way, Low Kick is because the main targets are hit with 120 base power with no drawbacks. So that'd be Zygarde, Snorlax, and um, Kovalia. That's our last one, of course. It does hit Palace Mine for base 80 power, which is a little bit better than Drain Punch. I think between all that, it makes the most sense here. And Knock Off is just good coverage. Good to knock items off of his team, especially if he's a Berry Snorlax, but potentially for maybe the Eviolite on Palace Mine. It'd be good to do that for sure. 
All right, let's move on to the next mod for the week, which is Tornadus Farian. This mod is going to have Grass CMZ Regenerator. It's going to have Grass Knot, U-Turn, Defog, and Hidden Power Rock. So the ideal here is that it'll be a Rotom Wash Lure. You want to go Grass CMZ, Grass Knot, you know, Z Grass Knot on it, do big boy damage to it. Grass Knot does nothing because it weighs literally negative five pounds. But Z Grass Knot would do a ton of damage, and that was his switch into it last time. So if he does that again, I'm ready. U-Turn is good, uh, just general good move to have, momentum and everything. So we've got the Defogs, we needed it on the team, especially for Sticky Webs from Ripombi. And we got Hidden Power Rock for Charizard. I think our HP is just general bulk after outspeeding the most relevant threat. All right, our next mod for the week is Mesprit. Mesprit, Mesprit is Leftovers. Levitate, Stealth Rock, Ice Beam, Healing Wish, and U-Turn. So no, we do not have Psychic this week. It was deemed not needed. So Stealth Rock is very important, especially if we want to ding Zard on the entry, or any of his mons, really. Especially because he doesn't... Yes, Mew has recovery, but some of these mons do not have recovery. Like, say, Rotom doesn't have great recovery. I'd love to get that type of chip damage off on it. Gengar, similarly. I mean, we have Spear Tomb, which only relies on Rest. All this stuff is good. Ice Beam. It hits Zygarde. It hits Zygarde. This is a primarily a Zygarde check, most of all. And it'll do that job, I think, very well. So Healing Wish is if we need to give a second life to Gallade, or Weavile, or Sarah Aura, we have the ability to do so, to get out of, say, extreme speed range from Zygarde. That's very important, because both of those mods, well, I should say Weavile and Sarah Aura, have ice coverage. Well, we're not there yet, I know. Spoilers, Sarah Aura's coming, but... Those mons have ice type coverage that can really hurt Zygarde, and they can definitely take extreme speeds. But if they're at low health, they can't, obviously. So that would be what this is for. Maybe it could be for Gallade as well if I want to get a good fighting type attack off, depending on what he brings. But overall, just the max physical defense will pay dividends in trying to deal with Zygarde and taking Thousand Arrows easily, even plus one attacks. Z Outrage, no problem. So I think between Drampa and this thing, we probably have Zygarde covered well. Plus, of course, the Zara Aura and the Weavile, which we are going to see momentarily. I think we've been all set. All right, our next mod is Zara Aura. Surprise! Yeah, it wasn't much of a surprise after I literally spent half my time talking from the last mod, talking about it. We've got the Expert Belt. We've got the Volt Absorber. We've got Substitute. Hidden Power, Ice Close Combat, and Plasma Fist. So our speed is enough for a Bombi with Naughty Nature to not lower our special attack since the Hidden Power Ice is very important for hitting Zygarde. We're going to go max physical attack though because we want Plasma Fist to basically be a nuke against most of his team. Say against Rotom Wash or against uh, uh, Zard Y against Spiritomb, against Gengar, who knows? All those mons we wanted to hit very hard. Close Combat obviously hits Cobalion, Snorlax, and Piloswine. Very important. And Sub is for a predicted shenanigan, so if he switches out, say, a Charizard Y, we'd be in good shape. If we want to dodge Will-O-Wisp from you, or from Brodom, or from Spiritomb, we would be in good shape. I like the set for the week, and I think we're good to go on to the last set, which is going to be Weavile. It's really pretty self-explanatory. I have enough speed to outspeed Bobombi if we need to, but that's kind of sketchy as two of my non-ice shard attacks are kind of resisted, but it's at least probably better to have. So we got Lumberry, so we can deal with Spiritomb easily, much more easily. I expect physically defensive Spiritomb, but it would definitely help, especially if I set up the sword stance. I can get a big knockoff off on it. Ice Shard is really good to force Zygarde to extreme speed. We've got the knockoff, just generally good coverage. I mean, if I could get a plus two knockoff off on a Mew, even with a Colber Berry, I think we'd be doing well. So it, it just has great coverage this game. The low kick hits the Cobalion, the Snorlax, the Pile of Swine for pretty good damage. I'm liking the team this week. I think it gives us a great chance of winning. I like the Cloud9 Drampa. I'm excited to use it. I just hope it works out. I hope he brings Zard. Anyway, guys, take care. We'll see you during the game.